Some of y'all angels' wings is dusty. They start flying. They start coughing because they ain't been moving because you've been talking, but you ain't been praying. Stop texting and start praying. Stop gossiping and start praying. Stop whispering and backbiting and start praying so angels can move on your behalf. Somebody needs to write on that wall. There's some walls in the back, too. If you're in the balcony, come down them steps and write what you're believing God for. I just felt a shift in the service. I need a praise break to seal it. Go. In his presence, my end up on wings like it. Glory heavy, so I gotta let go of my Got the Holy Spirit and we go wherever. That is my amigo. Holy Spirit, come down. Everybody stand up. Everybody stand up. Everybody stand up. Everybody stand up. Wave your hands in the air like you don't care. Uh, you're living, you're not dying. You're not walking, baby, you're flying. Hands up. Like an eagle. Let go of your ego. You can fly like an ego. And I'ma go wherever he go. Fly like an ego. They gon' mount up, up, up on the wings just like an ego. Bow down my ego. Wherever he go. That's where I go. That's where you go. Cause you know we go. Like an ego, break it down, break it down, break it down, break it down, break it down like an ego. Luke chapter 6, verse 12. You want to run it back? We about to just mount up on some wiggles like it. About to mount some wings just like it. This is not the swag surf. <laughs> Mount up on wings like an ego. Bow down pride, no more ego. I'ma go wherever he go. Flying like an ego. Like an ego. And I'ma go wherever he go. And I'ma fly just like an ego. Make my pride bow down, no more ego. I'ma go wherever he go. And I'm not going by myself, cause we go. I say we go, we go, ego. I'ma go wherever he go. Something's happening in our church today. I believe, and I need a report. Somebody tell me what's happening online. I believe something's happening online. Somebody needs to tell me. Tell me that miracles are happening online, that people are being filled with the Holy Spirit at their house. Elder James, hand me, please, that water. I just need you to know that if it's in the house, it's in your house. Which means if it's on your row, it's in your house. So all you need is to find one person who believes that what's been spoken and declared belongs to them and the whole row. I'm looking for the craziest 
row of praisers. Pastor Robert, please tell your granddaughter God is addressing the issues of her heart, those places that have been deeply wounded, places of pain and betrayal, the deep questions, the longing. I heard the Lord say to me right now, he says, tell her she has not lost anything. She's not lost time. Watch this. You have not lost status or stature with God. God knew exactly where you would be at this moment. He knew you'd be holding that baby at this moment. And the same way you're holding him, you're crying and he's asleep, God says, you're in my lap like he's in your lap. And God says, so I'm catching your tears as they drop. And inside of your tears is a prayer that your words cannot utter. But God says, I translate tears. I, God says, I speak in tears. I speak tears. I speak the language of tears. Now, in a moment, you're going to feel a, a wind. That is, the, that is the wings of angels moving swiftly towards you to bring your soul the comfort and the word of prayer, the answer from God is about to hit you in your soul. And anybody near her, God's about to visit this whole area. So y'all just need to prepare yourself. Last 24 hours, I was conversing with billionaires, millionaires. And you know what I ask them for? Not one thing. Because I'm not begging, asking anybody. I don't care what you have. I serve God. This is my family. We work hard. We clock in. We take overtime shifts so we can have a little extra money to go on vacation. Am I talking to somebody? And God blesses us and honors. Oh, I feel God. I came into the building today and I felt a, a, a weight had been lifted. It's, I don't know who this is for, but you're about to breathe easier. God has lifted the weight. He's not lifting. He has lifted the weight. You may not even know it yet, but whatever was heavy on you last night is gone today. Somebody either has or is about to, to sow a six-figure seed. He just told me that. Here's what's, never mind, never mind. I got word from one of our pastors about a, a, a seed that's coming. It's a six-figure gift. And, and it's crazy what God is doing in the house because he has favored this place. Tell somebody, they may not believe it, but you know it for yourself. You're in the right house at the right time. You're in the right house at the right time. Oh my God, I feel the presence of the Lord. I love whoever's back there writing on that wall. I'm, I'm speaking, I'm speaking sevenfold blessing on everything that's written on that wall back there. Anybody who wrote on it and sevenfold on this wall. For anybody that wrote on, there it is, she caught it right there. Had her Bible in her left hand and she's worshiping with her right. I, pro, I prophetically declare it. Now, for anybody that wrote on these walls, my prayer is that an explosion of the supernatural hits you. Boom! Just like that. May heaven honor the words that you wrote on faith. Let me give you this scripture, and then I'm going to do my best to be obedient to the word that I have been given. Luke chapter 6, starting at the 12th verse. 
Now it came to pass in those days that Jesus went out to the mountain to pray. Pastor, you read this scripture last week. I know, but you weren't really listening like I need you to listen. So I'm going to read it again. And continued all night in prayer. There's a lot of things we do all night. Prayer is not normally at the top of that list. Continue. Watch this. All night in prayer to God. I've never caught that until right now. Because sometimes you're just praying to yourself. But Jesus continued all night in prayer to God. And when it was day, that means the day broke. He prayed until the darkness lifted. Sometimes you got to pray till you feel that thing lift. He called his disciples to himself. And from the disciples, he chose 12, whom he also named apostles. Simon, whom he also named Peter and Andrew, his brother. James and John, Philip and Bartholomew. Somebody say and. You're not supposed to do this by yourself. Anybody who's an island, you already out of the will. I promise you, if you buy yourself, the enemy will pick you off. Matthew and Thomas, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon called the Zealot. Judas, the son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who also became a traitor. Say so, so, tell somebody, he became a traitor. Didn't catch that till this scripture. He didn't start out a traitor. He became a traitor. Something in him was bent towards the wrong thing. And even though he was in the presence of Jesus, he chose to continue to go down the wrong path. What does that mean? You can be in the presence, in the physical face of Jesus and still do wrong. So I don't want to hear anybody judging you for making mistakes in the middle of your faith journey because we all make mistakes. Judas had three years of being in the face of Jesus every day and he still betrayed him. Now, jump with me to Mark chapter 3. Quickly, quickly, Mark chapter 3. I'm reading from the New King James Version. I'm at the 13th verse. And Jesus went up on the mountain and called to him those he himself wanted. This is big. Very important. There's some folk that you want that God may not. They didn't catch that, Pastor A. Listen to, listen to me. He went up on the mountain and called to him those he himself wanted, and they came to him. Then he appointed 12. So he called all of them. He wanted all of them. God said, I appreciate that you want all of them, but I'm, I'm going to pare this down. God's getting ready to make your circle smaller. Because everybody can't go where you're going. People don't want to clap because you're like, well, which one? I don't want him to, because, you know, I like that one. I like how that one make me feel. And you'll feel your way straight into the flames of hell. He appointed 12 that they might be with him and that he might send them out to preach and to have, watch this. He, God said, these are the ones I want to preach and have power to heal sickness and to cast out demons. Somebody say, preach, preach. heal sickness cast out demons Simon to whom he gave the name Peter James the son of Zebedee and John the brother of James to whom he gave the name Boanerges that is sons of thunder Andrew Philip Bartholomew Matthew Thomas James the son of Alphaeus Thaddeus Simon the Canaanite I need y'all to catch this Simon the Canaanite okay catch that Simon the Canaanite and Judas Iscariot who also betrayed him and they went into a house. The title of this message is The Called and the Chosen. The Called and the Chosen. Father, speak through your word. May it be unmistakably you. All of it. And Jesus, may souls be added to the kingdom because of the preaching of the gospel. In the name of the only one that matters, Jesus Christ, the head of the church. Amen, amen, and amen. Quickly, go ahead and be seated. The called 
and the chosen. While you are kind of settling into your seat, I want to bring up another, again, this unbelievable co-op that we are beginning on March 5th. This is unbelievable. I am a huge proponent of homeschooling because I am tired of the agenda of educators and administrators who dishonor my faith and what I want to teach my kids. I'm a huge proponent, but there, need, there needed to be an opportunity for people to bring their kids into this type of setting without it being so burdensome cost-wise that you can see the benefit of having your kids taught by folk that love God, but are also academically excellent and proficient. We now have a homeschool program and an after-school component. So your kids get out of school, they get to come here, have a snack, help with their homework, science, math, reading, all of these things that are critical. And you, it's first through sixth grade. This is going to fill up fast. I think we only have, I don't know, I don't even want to say how many slots, but your kids need to be a part of this after school program. You need to go to that website while I'm talking right now. I'm giving you like a three minute grace period. I'm going to just be rambling for three minutes so you can go to the website and register your kids. You know how bad your kids are. They need Jesus. <laughs> and it's open not just to our congregation, but I'm announcing it to y'all before it get on the news so that you can be a part of what God is doing. How many people, just by a quick show of hands, who's going to get to the website, get their kids connected, or at least get the information? One, two, three, four, five, eh. Don't say that we didn't offer it to you first. Because I don't care who you are, child care costs a lot of money. How many people paying money for child care right now? you like, I don't know why I slow dance with your mama that night, because you are expensive. Yeah, we're getting ready to have child care as well. So listen, I want you to, to get, yeah, we're going to have child care as well. And so there are people that are paying $80,000 a year for two kids to go to child care. Anyway, don't say that your church is not making things available to you first. I want you to hear that. All right, so let's get to the word, the called and the chosen. This is a big deal for me. Big deal for me. First of all, happy Black History Month. I am I'm grateful to God that he allowed me to be born in this body. And I am grateful to God for his choice. He made me. I look like what he wanted me to look like. I think that every human being should be proud of what they look like. Your ethnic background was God's choice. Whether it's black, white, whether it's Hispanic, Asian, Canadian, Namibian, Ghanaian, from New Zealand, Australia, it doesn't matter to me. But what I won't do is dishonor God's creativity by saying color doesn't matter. Whatever color you are was God's choice, and he wanted to work out his will through your culture and through your color. So whether your skin is brown or your skin is white doesn't matter. In God's economy, as long as the blood is red, that's all that matters to the spiritual salvation of your soul. But in a world that still sees people based on melanin content, I want to make it clear that we honor people from all walks of life, all backgrounds, but this is Black History Month, and I wanted to say, happy Black History Month, all right? So, how many disciples do we have in the room? I saw one lady back there in the balcony. She threw both hands up. I'm going to ask one more time. How many disciples do we have in the room? If you're a disciple and you ain't ashamed of it, stand up. You're not ashamed. Look around. Okay, now be standing for a second because I want to tell you, 
What do you think a disciple is? Somebody talk to me. Hurry. Follower of Christ. Okay. So there were people in this scripture that were following Christ, but they weren't disciples. Chosen. Jesus called some to himself. He chose them, but the father didn't. So let me ask this. How many people think they're a disciple? <laughs> One of the camera robbers, I think I am. I'm back here on the camera. I don't know. I'm waiting on you to tell me. I might not even be saved. I don't know. <laughs> Go ahead and sit down. Let, let's talk about a disciple. So when Jesus got up from the grave, Matthew 28, he said, Go and make church members. Right? Are you sure? Well, what did he say? He said, go make disciples that look like you. So wait a minute. Black people are, are not only supposed to talk to black people. It's Black History Month. You can't have no fried chicken and Kool-Aid and talk about Jesus. That's racist, Pastor John. Yes, it is. It's very prejudiced. So you're telling me that my culture should not hinder me from reaching out to people that don't look like me. I'm just asking. Jesus is the head of the church. Do we all agree? Yes. Jesus is God. Do we all agree? Yes. He is the only way to the Father. Do we all agree? Yes. There is no other way to the Father except through Jesus. Is that clear? Yes. Jesus died, was buried, got up, and the last thing he says to these people is go and make disciples of all nations. So I don't get to stay in my safe color bubble. This is why I respect the white members of our church in a very conservative southern city to come into a church with a black pastor we need to honor the fact that they're pressing past culture, history, family dynamics, and they grew up in church that was done in 30 minutes or less, and we stay in here. If you see a white person or a light-skinned person, go hug them, tell them thank you. Thank you, white people. We love you. Give them some gas money. They don't need it. They got good credit, but still give it to them. Um, <laughs> that is so stupid. Go make disciples. Elder Linton, we've made church members. Pastor, what's the difference? Church members gossip. Church members lie. Church members are petty. They walk to somebody sitting in my seat. Last time I checked, you don't have a seat because you didn't die for anybody in this room. So you don't have a seat. And if you've been going that long, how are you still that immature that you've got your body connected to a seat, but your soul ain't connected to this word? A disciple is fully committed to the things of God. They don't play with the word. They live the word, eat the word, sleep the word, and breathe the word. Church members are petty, carnal, easily offended. I can't stay. Oh, I know. I didn't like what he said. I'm leaving. I'm taking my $8 and I'm going down the street. Would you please go and be blessed as you go? You've added nothing here. All you do is suck up oxygen. Let me tell you something. There is a difference between a church member and a disciple of Jesus Christ. And the difference is the fruit of their lives. 
Can I get two amens and a I know that's right? So I'm going to ask you again. Do not lift your hands. This is, I said don't lift your hands, wife. This is a rhetorical question. Are you a disciple? If you are a disciple, don't raise your hand, but raise it in the spirit. Are you sure? Well, pastor, what does a disciple do? I'm glad you asked. Because I need you to understand the difference between a church member and a disciple. Church members will talk about you before they pray for you. Disciples know what you're dealing with and walk in backwards like Noah's sons. Cover your nakedness and dare somebody to talk about you because they know what God delivered them from. I'm talking right, the, the service just shifted, Elder Ron. I need y'all to come on with me because I'm about to preach it like I feel it. Church members don't have a problem living outside the word when it's convenient to their flesh. Church members will use the excuse, well, I'm only human. Jesus the Bible says, was in all points tempted, yet was without sin. So I'm going to ask you again. This time you can raise your hand if you believe it. How many disciples do we have in this room and online? No joke? So let's talk about what the qualifications were for a disciple of a rabbi in the days of Jesus. First of all, for those of us who are culturally connected to the United States of America, Americanized Christianity varies greatly from the traditions of the Tanah and the Mishnah, which is the oral written history of the Jewish people and the culture, customs, and context that the Bible was written in. You're getting ready to learn some things today. So when your cousin asks you why you go to that church, you can hit it with the blah dot blah dot cow instead of just saying, oh, we had a time and we shouted. No, I learned some things. I'm tired of shouting and not growing. I'm a lot more confrontational in this season of my life. I'm not suffering anybody or anything. If, if I feel a push or a check in my spirit, I'm coming straight to you. Because disciples know how to walk in honor even in uncomfortable situations. Disciples stay offended, roll their eyes, walk past you, don't speak. Okay. But you've been in church 40 years. And you still petty. And will as soon as cuss me out before you go to the book of Proverbs. Be quick to listen and slow to speak. Church members will take the word of your enemy over their own personal experience with you. Church people will get mad at you and don't even know you. They'll get mad because of what somebody else said. When the Bible says you don't take the word of another individual, you... I'm not going to carry an offense when I don't know them. And I'm not going to carry gossip. In fact, instead of talking about them to me, let's call them. Let's get on a three-way. Tell them what you're saying to me. Oh, it's real quiet. It's less and less disciples in here. Don't worry, I'm going to be coming down your street in about three to two minutes. Somebody say disciple. Jesus said, you are to make disciples. How many church members do we have? This is your church. This is the place you call your church. This is my church. I'm putting my hand up on this. That's not a trick. I'm just like, I'm not, no, yes, I, no. This is your church. This is where you grow. This is where you feed on the word. So I need you to hear me. Today's message is to help us to go from simply being members of the church to being disciples of Jesus Christ, which is far more important than being a member of this physical building. Because I may die tomorrow, I'm not, but if I did, your commitment to Jesus should not change because your commitment is not to me, it's to Jesus Christ. Now there are pastors who need you to worship them and they wanna be a God. God's removing those people from power. 
I'm safe because there's nobody more broken than me, but I'm still anointed. And I'm called, and I was called when nobody knew who I was. And since the one that wrote my name is God, no one with a pencil can erase me. The called and the chosen. In the scripture, Jesus called this Mark chapter 3. Y'all got to go to that. This messed me up. He called all the ones he wanted. And then from them, he chose 12 who would become the apostles or the foundational pillars of what we now sit in as the local church. The apostles were the ones that the father told Jesus to choose from those who had been called. Whoa. All right, so Jesus called them, and then they were chosen. So the mandate is to make disciples, not church members. Now, Jesus invited everybody he wanted and then chose 12. What does that mean? Just because you're invited to one thing doesn't mean you're invited to the next thing. Ooh, this is good, this is good. Just because I got an invitation to the Grammys don't mean I'm going to get an invitation to the Oscars. Because the, the qualifications for one are not the qualifications for the other. Just because I got invited in the room doesn't mean I'm going to get chosen. Here's what's crazy. If you go read Matthew, Jesus was calling in Matthew 4, he was calling James and John off the boat. They were with their dad. Ain't that scripture? He said, hey, follow me. I'll make you fishers of he went over here, got a couple more fishermen, got Simon in there. Hey, 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 come off that boat. Come on, I'm going to make you fish as a man. Matthew, you a tax collector. Not anymore. Jesus was calling people out of their occupation into their calling. Your occupation is different from your calling. You can work at the hospital, but your calling is to pray while you walk in the halls. Your occupation may be a physician, but your, your calling is to be an agent for the great physician to be the conduit through your hands of his healing power. You might be an educator by occupation, but you're an emancipator by calling. Somebody say, I'm a disciple. I don't want you to be nervous about it because the reality is we desire you don't come to church on a Sunday morning anymore just because there's nothing else to do. You've come because you truly love Jesus. You believe that this is a community where you can learn and grow. You believe that God has spoken to you here. Many of us have testimony that God has done things here that have never happened in other places. And so we are here. This is where we're committed. I'm connecting to Jesus Christ. I want to be a disciple of Jesus. Let me tell you the qualifications for a disciple back in the day. Number one, the Jewish people started their children's religious studies at five years old. I want to make this real clear. Stop making Jesus optional for your children. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I have to learn right now in moments like this when we're all listening that there are moments in my flesh that I'm like, everybody shout. I just want to make sure you're No, 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 no. We're having a conversation. Stop making Jesus optional in the lives of your children. At five years old, Jewish families in the Middle Eastern Palestinian Jewish culture of the days of Jesus started their children on deep, rigorous religious study at five years old. So I'm not okay if we stay allowing your kids to draw coloring book pictures of Jonah and the whale and they 10 years old because the devil doesn't care how old your kids are. He wants to kill them. Am I talking to any parents who right now your kids come home talking about I'm depressed? What, what are you depressed about? You don't have any bills to pay. You eat every time you hungry. I don't know where it goes. You should be fat. You should be a large human being with lots of blubber, but it doesn't go anywhere. The moment you eat, you're hungry again. Am I talking to any parent? How are our kids dealing with depression? When we were growing up, we went outside for 12 hours. 
it was 150 degrees. There was no TV, no cable, no video games. We had a water hose to drink from. It was filled with lead. We did not die. We ran after the ice cream truck and we lived happily ever after. Now they got more cable, more TV, more games, more options, and more depression. Could it be that all of these options have actually isolated them? And instead of people raising them, technology is. And so the enemy lies because you're tired from a long day at work. You don't want to engage your children, so TV will tell them who they are. Their friends will tell them who they are. Social media will tell them who they are. But the first people we as parents are called to disciple are our children. I need an 18-second praise break in here. Today's school will let your kids transition genders and not tell you. It's okay to be angry about that if that is not something you're okay with. What's worse is that they live in your house and you didn't know. You miss it. I don't need a, I don't need a principal to tell me what's going on with my kids. I have something called the Holy Ghost and he will speak to me about my family if I'm listening. But if I'm too emotional or insecure or if I'm trying to feed a need in my own life and I'm a single parent and I need a man to be booed up under, I'm not going to be raising my kids because I'm going to need somebody to raise me. If I'm a father more interested in tail outside of my house than telling the devil you can't have my kids. I know the trick of the enemy. That's how he got my daddy. That's how he got my uncle. That's how he got my granddaddy. He almost got me. But I turned. I'll repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. I ain't talking no bullcrap gospel in here. I'm talking about a blood that saved me from the depths of sin. I was a low down dirty sinner on my way to hell. And God snatched me. I was about to lose my wife, my children, my name, my testimony, and my ministry. I was trying to kill everything that had God's name and he saved me. So you're going to have to excuse me while I shut. I want to know if I'm the only one in here that God saved from something. I said if he saved you from anything, you ought to bless him. If he delivered you from anything, you ought to bless him. Don't be embarrassed. You wasn't embarrassed when you was doing wrong. Throw your hand up. Hey man, I was a sinner. God saved me. Finally delivered me after years of bondage. Holiness is still right. I don't care if nobody wants to live holy. Holiness is still right. It still matters. Well, Pastor John, I heard, don't matter what you heard, the blood got a hold to me. Don't you ever make an excuse for sin. Don't you ever make a concession for the devil. Well, I guess that's just going to always be with me. I'm going to always sleep with a couple of women on the side. The devil is a lie. You can live a holy life with the Holy Spirit. You can be fully delivered, fully set free. Ask me how I know. Yeah. 
Somebody shout, I'm a disciple. Tell somebody the curse is broken. Oh, my God. Elder Brian, something's about to happen. There ain't, no, ain't no room in here for what's about to happen. I said, shout, the curse is broken. Hey, come here, sir. Don't let him go. I said, the curse is broken. Off every man in your family. The curse is broken. Whatever it was, whatever it is, whatever it thought it was going to be, it's gone. Now live your life in freedom. And every male in your family will be blessed because of this moment. Freedom in Jesus' name. Something just broke. Jewish families started the religious training of their children at five years old. It would culminate at the age of 12 or 13. They would have a bar mitzvah or a bat mitzvah. Bar mitzvah for the boys, bat mitzvah for the girls. If they showed a particular interest in their religious development, they would then be invited for further discipleship with a rabbi. So from the age of 13 to 30, they would literally follow a rabbi for an additional 17 years, at which point at the age of 30, they would then be allowed to have disciples of their own. So you can't make what you are not. Some of us can only invite people to church because the church hasn't really gotten in us. But discipleship says, I've been walking with him. I've got fruit. I've got a testimony. I got years in this thing. I dare you to put it in the chat feed. I have years in this thing. Anybody else got years walking with Jesus? Is there anybody that says, I've got history with Jesus? I know he's a provider. I know he's a healer. I know he's a sustainer, a restorer. I know he's a mind regulator. I know he is a minister of healing to my marriage. I know. I need somebody to shout, I'm a disciple. No, you didn't shout it. You're like, I ain't even saying, huh? I said, shout it if you believe it, I'm a disciple. I need everybody on the chat feed to put it in all capital letters with seven exclamation points. I'm a disciple. Oh, Lord, help me, Jesus. There's a couple things you need to write down real quick. Number one, discipleship is for the committed, not just the curious. It's good, bro. I saw somebody walking in to church this morning from the side. He had a black uh, skull cap. I think he had like a gold chain, fresh gold chain. He was walking in smooth. Where you at, my guy? You know you got on a gold chain, like a black shirt with the gold. There he is, my guy. I saw you through my curtain. I was like, that's what I'm talking about. You know, because back in the day, you wouldn't be allowed to rock a scully in a fresh gold chain with a fresh, you know what I'm saying, scarf. They would have judged you. When I saw him, I said, Lord. You're winning people that don't look like church folk. That's the church I pastor. Because we love God, but we got just a little bit of hood, just a little bit of swag, a lot of sophistication. We can be classy, but we can also be slightly ratchet when we need to be. Tell somebody I'm committed to this. Elder Linton said something a few weeks ago in an elders meeting. Bless me. He said, this is my church. He said, I don't care what people say. People always got something to say about my church, my pastors. I tell them, don't bring that to me. This is my church. I made my decision. This is where the Lord planted us. He spoke to me. See, that's the thing that I love. When I made a commitment, it don't matter what you got to say about my Jesus. I'm not trying another version of Jesus. I'm not trying another God. I'm not trying another path. I'm not burning sage.
Them demons like, that smell nice. I'm still in here. But when you get some oil and you start pleading the blood of Jesus, demons got to get out your house. They got to pack bags. They got to take every demon with them. Sage don't stop a demon, but the blood! <laughs> Write it down. Discipleship is for the committed, not just the curious. Next one I want you to write. Discipleship is zero or 100. Ain't no middle ground. Go from zero to 100 real quick, Kai. Understand me? Zero or 100. How do you know this? What did Jesus say? Eat my flesh, drink my blood, lest you have no part in me. That means all of it. All or none. For those who want to just dip their foot in discipleship, that's not how it works. Jesus, you got to get in there. Yeah, yeah, you got to wobble with it. You got to get in there. Get in there. All right, you can't, you can't, no. No. Hey, save girl, won't you back it? Stop it. Stop it. Zero or 100. In this season, ask God to give you discernment who's a zero and who's a 100. You're going to say, well, pastor, I'm not sure. If it's a 50, it's a zero. I know he marks off six of the ten boxes. That's still a failure. Ooh, I just messed up your date because he was going to pay for your bread at Cheesecake Factory, girl. <laughs> You better go make you some soup at the house. Why, after all these years, would you settle for anything less than God's very best? Well, I don't want to be lonely. You're going to be even more lonely with him there because he still can't meet your needs. Real, real quiet. I'm going to get out of there. <laughs> like, I'm leaving here today. Somebody say zero or 100. It's an all or nothing proposition. You're either going to serve God or not at all. All right, next thing. Discipleship is about faithfulness and focus, not fame and fanfare. Some of y'all not taking notes. That's the difference between a church attendee and a disciple. I'm not judging you. I need you to understand. Most people go to buildings so they can feel better as opposed to becoming better. I've asked every leader in this church, get a Bible, a journal, and a pen so that you can write. Not just put it in your phone. Some of my leaders honor that. Others have not yet honored it. I'm not judging them. I'm not looking at anybody on purpose. The point is, I'm not optional in this house. My voice is not optional in this house because of who I am in this house. If you don't like who I am in this house, find a house that you can go to and receive from. But don't be in here and not grow. Somebody say be faithful. Be faithful. Tell somebody focus. focus. I love that the babies came down. I love that. How you doing, sweet girls? Y'all good? Good. Not fame or fanfare. It's a lot of churches or pastors want to be famous. They want to... They want to be famous, man. They want, to, they want fans. They want followers. They want likes. I am grateful God has given me a great deal of notoriety. But I'm not on social media no more. I'm just, that's just me. I'm not judging anybody. I'm not telling you to do what I do. I'm just making it clear. I heard God for me. The only thing I care about is being honorable, loving, faithful to my wife, raise my kids, die right. That's it. That's it. I don't need the distraction. Again, I know how easy it is to get sucked into other people's worlds. You scrolling, before you know it, you just wasted an hour looking at other people's lives and nothing in your life has changed. Woo! How 
many more dopamine hits do you need before you decide I'm still broke, my marriage is still a mess, I'm still in debt, I'm unhappy, and scrolling looking at other people made me more miserable. You looking at pictures that took them an hour to touch up before they put it on there. You done fell in love with somebody online. You don't know that they feet smell like three bags of corn chips. Because pictures don't let you scratch and sniff. They look good, but you haven't checked that medical report. They got a couple things in there that if you go in there, you're going to die. I'm talking the word. Because the enemy's been killing us slowly. Somebody say, I want to be a disciple. When you're a disciple, then everything in your life lines up with the word. And anyone or anything that doesn't line up with the word, you get rid of them. Next thing, discipleship is about long-term fruit, not short-term popularity. I don't want to be popular. I want to be faithful. I want to produce fruit. One day I'm going to be in a brown box, my family on the front row. I wanted to be said that I was a man of God, a man of integrity, a man of holiness, a man of character, a man of deep discipline and conviction, one that wasn't easily punked by a bunch of these clowns that be watching our service hoping for some evidence that I'm somehow getting ready to bow down and get out the fight. Fool, you can keep watching and logging on. I'm going nowhere. Just keep watching. Relentless love story is going nowhere but up. Even the camera people got their hands lifted. And if they working and praising, surely you can praise right where you sit. Jesus called them and from them they were chosen. I'm about to round third and heading for home. How many disciples were there? Mm -mm. There were more than 12. There were many disciples. He chose 12 who would become apostles. Called. Now I need you to go ahead and look at somebody and just, I'm sorry, boo, I was chosen. Just tell, I'm, I'm, I was chosen. I'm. Matter of fact, tell them, don't get mad at me. I didn't choose me. He chose me. This is good, brother. Watch this. So, in the days of Jesus, those who wanted to be disciples would choose their rabbi. But in this scripture, Jesus said, no, I'm going to choose you. How old was Jesus when he started his ministry? Same age that you are allowed to have disciples. Disciples are those who don't know as much as you, have not lived what you've lived. Which means if he was 30, they were younger. It got real quiet. Let me show y'all a picture that y'all see all the time. This is the picture of the Last Supper. Show this picture. Y'all see this picture? That look like Willie Nelson and 12 country singers. I want y'all to look at the picture. Do y'all see these men? How old do these men look? I'm sorry. Just look at them. Have y'all seen this picture before? That's the Last Supper, right? This is Jesus and his disciples, right? Wrong. And the problem is, European artists drew a picture in line with what they needed to perpetuate a particular type of gospel that would keep black and brown people subjugated. And they used this picture and a white Jesus as an excuse for slavery and other atrocities. Now, oh my God, he's talking race. I'm not talking race, I'm talking demons. Because the enemy used this to perpetuate evil. The Bible says his hair was like lamb's wool, feet like bronze. I don't know if you know, but it's a few people in my family who you ain't gonna get a comb through their hair because it's lamb's wool. And I'm not talking about the hair you purchased. I'm talking about them beads in the kitchen on the back of that neck. 
Why, pastor, are you bringing this up? Because there are people who use the Bible to justify slavery. I'm getting ready to break this devil in half. Genesis 5, when Noah was naked and his sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, found out one of his sons, Ham, went in and saw his father naked, ran out and said, Daddy in there, butt naked. Shem and Japheth walked in backwards, covered their dad, walked out. They would not look at his nakedness. That's how you know their Ham was a church member. Because church members will expose your nakedness. But disciples walk in backwards because they know they were naked once too. Oh, this is good. When it was all said and done and Noah found out, Pastor Robert, he said, cursed be Canaan. Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants, he shall be to his brethren. Ham, Shem, and Japheth. They got the same mother and father. But it has been a lie throughout history that somehow Ham is the father of black people or Africans. And so they deserve to be enslaved. How is it that we got the same mama and daddy, but I'm the only black one? Good night. Thank you. You've been a great audience. So for all the people who thought that the children of Canaan would be cursed, go back to Mark chapter 3. I'm getting ready to shout and you're going home. Mark chapter 3. One of the disciples was named Simon, but it also made a description of him that it didn't do for the other 11. Simon the Canaanite. So just in case he was cursed, Jesus says, now you're blessed. Because not only are you called, I've chosen. I need everybody in here to stand up and give God a praise. I don't care what your background is. Jesus has redeemed you by his blood. I don't care what you look like, what color you are, where you came from, what your credit score is. Jesus has redeemed you by his blood. Doesn't matter what they have to say about you. God says you're worthy of being a disciple in the name of Jesus. That's your Black History Month lesson for the year. Oh, by the way, you know that picture of the, y'all see all these people? Look at them receding hairlines. No Middle Eastern Palestinian Jew look like none of these people. No, not one. No, not one. That man has got to be about 70 years old on the end. Are you ready for this? The age of the disciples was between 13 and 25. So when Minister Brandon came on the stage and we said he covers our kids, we said, oh, that's nice. If I'm Satan and me as a senior leader has given him the mandate to train up our teenagers, if I'm Satan, I'm going to do whatever I can to stop that ministry because that reminds me of this ministry. Because it was teenagers that turned the world upside down. That's why the enemy wants your kids so bad. Stop letting them choose whether or not they come into church. You so, oh, the uh, baby, I know you're tired from what? Shut up, get up. Put some deodorant on, brush your teeth. Sloppy self, tuck your shirt in, you're going to church. Um, I don't want to go. I, I'll, be, I'll kill everything in here. I'll kill everybody in here. The disciples were teenagers. The oldest was Peter because he was married. So he was at least 15 because they were getting married at 15 back then. Some of us got big mamas that was married at 15. Your grandmother was 14 when she got married. How many kids she had? Seven kids. And then how, how many years was she married? 
68 years. Watch this. Of the disciples, only one of them died of natural causes. It was John the Revelator. He was also the youngest. Most theologians believe he was 13. By the time he got to the Isle of Patmos and was writing Revelation, he was probably close to 80 or 90. But I need you to hear me. He had been walking with him. He was a disciple. Not only was he called, he was chosen. Simon the Canaanite breaks whatever you thought the curse was over people of a particular color or region. This idea of white evangelical Christianity that has really turned into a political party or black gospel, which has also become a cultural uh, uh, expression, none of it looks like the original intent of Jesus Christ. So my blackness doesn't give me a pass any more than your whiteness gives you a pass. The only pass we get is through the blood of Jesus. Yeah, the service is long, but the Holy Ghost been here the whole time. Jesus chose a Canaanite. Just in case y'all were still trying to hold on to a curse that they are somehow not worthy. Before we go running making pictures of European last suppers that don't even look like the disciples. The same way your nativity scene be jacked up every year. You got a baby in there with some angels, some animals, and three kings. They were wise men from the east, and Jesus was at least two years old. Bless your heart and all your Christmas parts. We just messed up everything about Jesus. The difference between church attenders and disciples. My question that I end with, are you just called or are you chosen? The doors of the church are open. There are some people in this room that need to go from called to chosen. Come to the front of this church right now. This is your church. This is where you're going to grow. This is where you're going to develop. If that's you, meet me here right now. Meet me here right now. She's walking by herself. I don't know why or how. Come on down here, baby. Who else? There are others. There are others. If you clap, they will come. What's your baby's name? What's up, J-Ron? What's up, man? What up, man, man? What up, little man, 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 man? Hey, y'all celebrate my new baby coming down here. Come on here. If he can come down on crutches, y'all can clap. Here comes some more. They're joining the church. Celebrate them as they walk. Here comes some more. Here comes some more. What up, Jake? Come on, you wanna come up here with me? Come on, you wanna come up here with me? Y'all need to keep clapping. God is doing miracles. Hey, man. Hey, baby. Somebody else is coming this way. Some of y'all need to ask your kids. Hey, Jay. Uncle John used to have hair like that long time ago. Long. When was that? I don't need you to do that now, Apple. Don't do that. Look at that baby down there. Look at her with them pants. Them little bell-bottom pants. Look at that. Come on, y'all. Here they come. Walk with her, Elder Lynn. I don't want nobody walking alone. It's a couple teenagers need to make their move. Come here. Come here Climb over this. 
Is there anybody else? Everybody stretch your hands this way. Everybody at the altar. Welcome home. Welcome home. You hear me? Welcome home. Welcome home. I know that's your baby. Welcome home. Everybody who's at the altar, I want you to pray this prayer. Lord Jesus, it's me. I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus is Lord. Thank you for the blood that was shed for me. I receive the free gift of salvation, not through my works, but the finished work of the cross. The blood is enough to pay for all my sins. Now, Holy Spirit, come live inside and teach me how to be more like Jesus each and every day. You are my Savior and my Lord. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen.